began today's show with news about SeaWorld, a popular animal theme park known for its dolphin and killer whale performances. On Tuesday, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals revealed SeaWorld uh, had infiltrated its organization by sending an employee named Paul McComb on an undercover mission posing as an animal rights activist. According to PETA, McComb took part in numerous PETA protests against SeaWorld, including one at the 2014 Rose Parade in Pasadena, when he was arrested along with other activists. One photo posted on Twitter showed him inside a police van along with other arrested activists. McComb told activists his name was Thomas Jones. Unlike the other uh, activists arrested that day, he was released without charge. His name never appeared on an arrest sheet. According to PETA, the undercover SeaWorld employee also repeatedly used social media in an effort to incite other activists, stating that it's time to, quote, grab pitchforks and torches and time to burn SeaWorld to the ground. To talk more about the case, we're joined by three guests. Michael Struger is with us, director of litigation for the PETA Foundation. Hal Weiss is a volunteer with PETA who was arrested alongside the undercover SeaWorld employee at the 2014 Rose Parade. They're both joining us from Los Angeles. In Washington, D.C., Will Potter is with us. Investigative reporter and author of Green is the New Red, an insider's account of a social movement under siege. We invited SeaWorld on the show, but they declined our request. Will, first lay out this picture of what has been exposed. What we found out recently is that in their desperation, as their profits continue to plummet and as SeaWorld has really been rocked by the Blackfish uh, movie and the cultural change that that's prompted, they've resorted to some dirty tricks, including using uh, staff members to attempt to infiltrate protest groups and PETA volunteers, going so far as to actually provoke and instigate or attempt to, on social media, illegal activity. Uh, unfortunately, though, this isn't really a shock if you've been following these types of activities by corporations by, for quite some time. Matthew Struger, um, Strugar, um, you're the director of litigation for PETA. Uh, explain what you learned and when you learned it. Like Will said, this was a, a desperate attempt by a desperate company to save us stock, uh, stock prices that are plummeting and attendance that is tanking. Uh, when this gentleman was arrested with 16 other activists at the 2014 Rose Parade, uh, he was handcuffed. He was taken to the station with all the other activists. And after the other activists were uh, booked and released, he never came out of the jail. And people were waiting, sitting around, still waiting for him to be released. Um, and they called him and he said, oh, I, I, I got out a long time ago. Uh, we looked into it. He never showed up on any arrest sheets. He never... Um, received any charges. And in connection with my representation of the other 16 activists, I called him uh, basically as uh, to interview him as a witness in connection with my client's arrests. He gave me just some really incredible stories, saying that uh, he stayed at a local city nearby before the Rose Parade, but couldn't name any city nearby, including the one that he stayed in. Said that after he was arrested, he simply uh, he broke down crying in a holding cell in the police had pity on him and released him, as if that's something that ever happens. Um, and then when I asked him, um, you know, where he worked and some basic pedigree information and told him I might have to call him as a witness in connection with the criminal trials, he got incredibly defensive, told me to lose his number, eventually hung up on me, said there was no way he was ever going to testify. So uh, that's when we knew that something was up. Mm. And how, Weiss, could you talk about the role he played uh, in the protests and your uh, interactions with him? My interactions with him were rather limited. Uh, if you look at the photographs, uh, I think he was arrested right next to me. I shared a bench with him in the paddy wagon. Other than that, I remember him essentially keeping to himself. Uh, he didn't say much to me. I had never seen him before that day, and I don't recall ever seeing him again after. So talk about the protests, Hal, that you engaged in and your feeling now about uh, this person who you thought was a fellow activist being an employee of SeaWorld, the organization you were protesting. Hmm. Well, we uh, went out on that January 1st to protest SeaWorld's participation in the Rose Parade. Um, 
Why? And I recall uh, Tom Tom Jones. This is his name, or Paul Paul McComb, whatever his actual name is, uh, being there with us, um, kind of just popping up out of the blue. Uh, I was extremely focused on the day um, ahead of us. I wanted to uh, show my concern about orcas and captivity at SeaWorld, um, so I didn't pay much attention to him. I want to turn to a clip from the documentary Blackfish. It's a 2013 documentary, which takes a critical look at SeaWorld, the film exposing how holding killer whales in captivity is dangerous for both them and their human trainers. This is a part of the trailer for Blackfish. When you look into their eyes, you know somebody is home. They're an animal that possesses great spiritual power, not to be meddled with. Orange County Sheriff's Office. We need SO to respond for a dead person at SeaWorld. A whale has eaten one of the trainers. Tilicombo is the one that went after her. Don is the senior trainer here at Shamu Stadium. She captured what it means to be a SeaWorld trainer, that it made me realize what happened to her really could have happened to anyone. I've been expecting somebody to be killed by a telecom. We weren't told much about it, other than it was trainer error. It didn't just happen. It's not a singular event. You have to go back to understand this. <laughs> the speedboat herded them in and they could just pick out the young ones. This is the worst thing that I've ever done. When Tillicum arrived at SeaWorld, he was twice as large as the next animal. We stored these whales in what we call a module, which was 20 feet across and 30 feet deep, and the lights were all turned out. Probably led to what I think is a psychosis. The film Blackfish recounts the 2010 death of veteran SeaWorld trainer Don Brancho by a killer whale named Tillicum. Now, we did reach out to, to SeaWorld. They re re declined to come on the show, but they did send us a statement to read on the air. They wrote, we are focused on the safety of our team members, guests, and animals, and beyond that, we do not comment on our security operations. This is a responsibility we take very seriously, especially as animal rights groups have become increasingly extreme in their rhetoric and tactics. In fact, PETA itself actively recruits animal rights activists to gain employment at companies like SeaWorld, as this job posting demonstrates. Safety is our top priority, and we will not waver from that commitment. Again, that the statement of SeaWorld. Matthew Strugar, um, the uh, lawyer for uh, PETA, if you would respond. It's a, it's a bizarre response that they say that they're concerned about the safety of their employees and the, the rhetoric of animal rights activists, when it was their own employee who had uh, the most inflammatory rhetoric of any anti-SeaWorld uh, activist that I've seen. We had this guy uh, posting on social media that you need to bring the pitchforks and torches to the demos, that we need to burn this place down, um, even encouraging activists to show up at SeaWorld vice president's houses with bullhorns late at night and keep them uh, awake. And that's just not the kind of rhetoric we often hear uh, within the anti-SeaWorld uh, movement. This, this guy was going to demonstrations saying, you know, we need to take increasingly militant action, uh, increasingly, you know, encouraging people to ramp up their activity. Um, so the, the bizarre thing is that the uh, most inflammatory rhetoric and the most, uh, you know, who seemed like the biggest threat to SeaWorld safety uh, of its Park employees was their own employee in this situation. And uh, journalist Will Potter, I wanted to ask you, what's been the impact of the campaign of PETA to expose the mistreatment of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a fish uh, at, uh, at SeaWorld? Uh, you're seeing now on television almost B, uh, BP-like uh, ads <laughs> on television constantly by SeaWorld uh, claiming that it's uh, treating uh, its animals properly. Well, when people make a lot of money by abusing animals, they don't like having that abuse exposed. 
because it means they lose profits and consumers don't like that very much. And that's exactly what's happened with SeaWorld and especially with Blackfish. I mean, it's really unprecedented how quickly the tides have turned against this company. Um, in just a couple of years, there's been a groundswell of public opposition and a, just a cultural change in how we regard these animals and using animals for entertainment at places like SeaWorld. And I think these types of tactics that I've reported on extensively from corporations are truly an act of desperation when activists become incredibly effective at changing cultural values, cultural discussion, and also threatening corporate profits. I think, if uh, anything, the example of this uh, infiltration and attempts at provocation show the lengths to which these companies are willing to go uh, rather than change their business practices and respond to consumer pressure. Uh, you, in fact, have exposed other corporations infiltrating groups like PETA and others, Will. Right. And we're just really seeing the tip of the iceberg with this, I think. I mean, for a long time, I've written about tactics like this, disruption, infiltration, provocation by the FBI, which we've seen for decades. But we don't know as much about what corporations are doing. Some of the other examples I have reported on, though, are Coca-Cola was exposed through WikiLeaks of contracting with a private security firm called Stratfor to spy on PETA activists and uh, gather information about their protest activity. Burger King also hired spies to uh, gather information about the Student Farm Worker Alliance who were protesting their labor practices. And similarly, Greenpeace found out that uh, companies like Dow Chemical were going through their dumpsters and hiring private firms uh, to gather information in illegal ways to do that. So this is really fits into that pattern of behavior. But what's truly disturbing is we don't know the extent to which this is happening. At least with the FBI, there's some ostensible oversight or accountability. With these corporations, there's nothing like that. I want to thank you all for being with us. A fascinating discussion. We will continue this discussion. Journalist Will Potter with us from Washington and PETA volunteer Hal Weiss, as well as People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals litigation director Matthew Strugar joining us from Los Angeles. That does it for our show. If you'd like a copy, go to democracynow.org. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Burke, Renee Phelps, Amin Sheikh, Steve Martinez, Sam Al-Khafani Massoud, Ravi Khanna, uh, Ravi Karen.